everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan, and then we have our special guest back again, Raul Ortiz. Uh, Raul, just in case someone didn't watch our pre previous episode, would you mind introduce yourself again? Yes, I'm Reverend Raul Ortiz Jr. and I am running for State Assembly uh, District 64, which is uh, La Habra, La Mirada, South Whittier, Santa Fe Springs, Norwalk, Downey, Bell Gardens, Bell, and Cudahy. Oh, wow. Okay. You remember all the city's name. <laughs> do, you have, do you have to say it every meeting? <laughs> uh, pretty much. I, I, learned, I got it down pretty quick because in the beginning, it was a little spotty. <laughs> and I wanted to get it to flow. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, if you don't, if you didn't watch the previous episode, uh, Raul is a reverend. So, uh, why don't you talk about uh, what's happening in this country and why religion is so important in this country and why we're getting all these attack on the left, all these uh, <coughs> leftist agenda as uh, we speak politically. What's the things behind it? It's not like Democrat, Republican, left or right. Okay. It is evil versus good. You know, it's a spiritual warfare that we're experiencing. I mean, it, it's it's at a micro level in people's lives to community to state to nation to globally. And mm. it's just it's the times that we're living in. You know, Matthew twenty four. You know, the birthing pains. Uh, it's just so clear to me. You know, uh, when I read scripture and I read what you know the prophetical portions of it and what's going on and and what i see you know happening today especially they kind of hyper accelerate it uh when they shut everything down for the pandemic you know when they wanted to you know mask us they wanted us to separate us you know six feet i was said why six feet why why did why not seven feet why not eight feet why not five feet why did they settle for six feet and you know and that number just kept on like being repeated over and over i think there's a lot of programming oh, okay. predictive programming when you look at revelation 13 uh where it talks about the mark of the beast 666 you know i walked into a bank and i almost walked out of it uh and this is just a several months ago and i walked into this bank and there was you know, on the floor because a lot of them have six feet and, you know, throughout the whole store, you know, we saw that right during the whole thing. Well, this one literally had one six and then another six and another six and then you're at the teller. And, oh, six, 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 and you're at the teller. I'm like, oh, I almost walked out <laughs> because of it, you know, but it's just, uh, you know, so people may laugh about that and may think that's crazy, but why did they pick that number? Again, this is a very spiritual war, uh, battle that we're experiencing right now. When they shut the churches down during that time frame and, and, and you know, and going back to what you asked too, as far as like what's going on how the religion works with everything you know a lot of it has to do with judgment begins in the house of the lord i grew up during the 80s uh, I was born in 67, so I'm now re you know, dating myself as to how old I am. <laughs> but in the 80s, I was a teenager, and I got saved, like in the last program, on uh, October 10, 1982, I was I was uh, 15. So this October, I'm going to be 40 years old in the Lord. Um, you well, know, you are really young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Christ, yes. Uh, so when I, during the 80s, there was a call, The Moral Majority, by Dr. Jerry Falwell. He was a pastor at Thomas Road Baptist Church uh -huh. in, uh, in Virginia. Virginia. Uh, he founded the school, Liberty University, making champions for Christ because he wanted to impact the generation and get, you know, Christian soldiers out into every field and, you know, in the marketplace. And so what happened is that um, he, he, the more majority really helped Reagan get elected on his second term. Yes. But he got such a backlash from the church itself for being politically involved and then it, the, then the more majority just kind of folded yeah. and so through the 90s you know there were some you know organizations that were christian that were very you know politically astute but for the most part their church went asleep yeah through the 90s into the 2000s and into now from 2010 to until 2016 when they started to wake up again but the enemy has taken such a foothold and politics and and a tyranny that just methodically slowly but surely just kept on taking more and more of our freedoms away so really it's it's the church that's lost its salt 
and being the light that it should be. And, 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 and it goes right down to the leadership, mm-hmm. the shepherd, the shepherds are not shepherding. And right now, the good thing about the pandemic, uh, it really created a separation of the churches that are awake and hot and fire for God. So you got really two types of preachers in, in America right now. Mm-hmm. You got preachers who are thundering and saying, wake up, wake up. You know, the enemy's at hand, wake up. And then you got other churches, pastors that are just saying, everything's okay. Okay, go back to sleep. Don't get involved. You know, uh, we're not both supposed to be politically involved. But that's in de- direct uh, contradiction from our historical roots back to the founding fathers and just before the founding fathers because the brush fires of liberty started in the pulpits of America. Mm-hmm. It was the preachers that preached, you know, uh, stir sowing uh, sermons on freedom and liberty to the point where King George said, hey, we got to silence these preachers. They're causing a ruckus over there across the pond. And so he started ordering that they had to bring all their sermons, send them to him so he can review their sermons and then approve them. So some churches like today capitulated their religious freedom, sent to the King George, but the others said, no, we're not going to do that. That's th- my sermons between God and I and my what I believe God tell me to tell my people. You know, So we've gone such a far away from our roots, historical roots as Christians. Yeah, especially the, the one you talk about. Uh, it's the, 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 it, during the Revolutionary War, there was actually a group of pastors or preachers, yes. the Black Robe Regiment, right? Yes, yes. And uh, that's, that, that's how God sees us and that's how preachers are supposed to be. Yes. So not just a, a fighter, but a warrior, a warrior with the correct mindset, a warrior fight for justice. Amen. That is what God wants us to do on this earth. A lot of people say like, hey, keep your religion uh, to yourself and don't bring it into politics. The truth is every single book in the Bible, there is politics. Yes. There is the, a king. Yep. There is a, a, some sort of a lead, spiritual leader. There is there is how they lead people this way, that way, and the people do this and do that. The whole book is politics. Yes. And people get wrong these days. Like politics is just Senate and the House of Representative and doing all this thing. No, that's not what politics is. Politics is how we live our life and then how we come to an agreement how we live together, mm-hmm. how people with different opinion li- live, to- live together with a certain limit. And right now, the left is pushing it all the way. And the, the right, the preacher, they're, they're not out there fighting for us. They kept compromising. Mm-hmm. They kept compromising. I just met uh, someone the other day. He was a politician for the longest time. And he said, he's a Republican too, and he said in the Congress, we have to compromise. We have to do this in order to get things done. There's nothing I can do about it. But if you think about it, when is the last time the left compromise (laughs) on basically any issue? So as a pastor and then as the one that's going to run for office, what are you going to do in there? How are you going to make sure that you will not compromise and then you will stand firm in your faith and in in your, uh, the God's righteousness and then like all these people and you just want to get things done. Uh, Maybe that's okay too. Uh, How are you going to make sure that none of that is going to happen? Not by strength, not by my might, but by his spirit that saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's going to be by his grace and his spirit. Uh, empowering me I'm just a vessel I'm just an agent Uh, I'm just the channel for him to speak through you know I'll I'll be that voice in the wilderness just like John the Baptist in that scenario you know even even if I get my head cut off (laughs) you know uh, God you know God designed me a very, you know, and he's designed each and every one of us in a unique way mm-hmm. for his purpose, you know, for his will, for your life, for my life, you know, uh, for the listener's life. And he, and, and so he's designed you a very specific way for the fight for your generation to serve your generation well, so that one day we are not working for a BA, a DR, or MA, <laughs> but I'm working for a WD. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to see Raul Ortiz Jr. WD, you know, or WD before my name, you know, well done, you know, 
So, um, and, and like the apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I had kept the faith, you know, so, um, how I'm going to ensure not to compromise. Well, you know, God's designed me in a way of a, of a fighter. And I've been a fighter, you know, uh, at one point before I was saved, you know, the background I had, I was not such a good background, you know, before <laughs> I was saved, you know, um, and, but I was a fighter, you know, I boxed in high school. I did, I did martial arts. Um, I played football and I, I actually had the opportunity to play uh, semi-pro football for eight seasons. I was a middle linebacker. So middle linebacker is that position, you know, team captain. And it's kind of a fighting position when you're taking on these big dudes, you know, coming at you so that that's been the kind of how I've, I've been built and so even in the marketplace when I'm out there and I'm talking and I'm conversing with people and when people bring things up you know I, I don't let it go on challenge you know in a very tactful way I express my viewpoint too and through the years God has been able to use that to bring people over into into the truth and kind of open up their eyes or at least question you know their their ideology that they have so uh, I think that you know going in there it's going to be by his strength you know the battles the lord's he goes before me and you know and i'm just gotta be in tune and uh and obedient to his word and i won't compromise when i get there wow that's a powerful word uh, i mean when you said the word well done and then this this song just came, came to my head i was the i forgot which uh album it was from, from and it just Amen. came down and then uh the, the well done it's uh it's hard to get it especially yes. in uh in this generation yeah. and just crazy I, I i hope that when i go up there and i'll get a wd too amen and, uh, and that's uh amen. and that's what we're all trying to do yes. amen. so you talk about uh we, we talked about uh, a warrior and then how you're gonna fight it there is something that uh, our founder gave us in case our government become tyrannical, which is the Second Amendment. Yes. And in California, the Second Amendment, it's uh, basically non-existent, I'll, I'll, I'll say. I mean, we can own it, but if we do anything with it, we, we protect ourselves with it, we still get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think about the gun control? And since you're a pastor, what does the Bible tell us about Second Amendment? Men are to be the protectors. You know, when Jesus... Before he's going to go to the crucifixion, before the Last Supper, he's talking with his disciples. And he says, if you have your coat, you know, sell it and buy a sword. Yeah. And then they bring him, we have two swords. He goes, that's enough. A lot of people forget about that verse and that, that, that passage. And, you know, the word there used for that sword in the Greek was a, a, a short sword, which is close combat, uh -huh. you know, as a sword that they had, the Roman soldiers carried. So why would the Lord tell them that? Because he knew they were going to face perilous times as they went out there preaching the gospel and that they would need something to defend themselves, yeah. you know. Now, there might be a lot of disagreement in this, but this is where I've come to disagree with them, you know, <laughs> that God wants us to protect ourselves. You know, it, it kind of got lost somewhere. Even when you look at and read the Gospels, you don't see them resisting. They're, you know, they're, they're getting martyred. Yeah, and know? especially like uh, when... After, right after that incident, he, he, Peter got the sword and he sliced up the ears off the Roman soldier. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus is like, "Hey, don't do that! Yeah. Those who kill by the sword will be killed by the sword." Yeah. yeah so, so that time when I was reading, it, I was like, "Hey, that's very contradicting. What was the sword for?" Right. Right. So, what do you think about that? Well, I think I think it was just the timing wasn't right. Uh -huh. You know, because uh, because Jesus was supposed to go to the cross. Yeah. So here, Peter, and he was always very reactionary yes so I, that's where we learned to love peter because he a lot of us can relate to him yes you know and so like he was the first one want to get out of the boat and get underwater you know yeah. uh he's the first one that said no lord i'm not i'm not going to deny you you know yeah. so he's the first one to, you know to try to stop this guy and you know was going for his neck but the probably guy moved out of the way and he got his ear so it wasn't timing for that yet because you know satan's trying to prevent him 
from going to the cross because he knows he's going to de be defeated at the cross and then under the resurrection. So there was it wasn't the right time for that, you mm -hmm. know. So men are the protectors. Yes, we are the protectors. We have to protect our family, mm -hmm. you know, uh, spiritually, physically, provisionally. You know, we are the protectors. And something has happened where they sedated so many men uh, in our culture through informational warfare, through the stuff they put in our foods that 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 lowers our testosterone, <laughs> and, and our breaks our, yeah, and, and raises <laughs> our estrogen. And and so with all this going on in a man, there you know there's an epidemic of emasculated men and so it's time that we you know don't worry about what they talk about this toxic masculinity we need to restore godly masculinity and be men again men of god and when you look at those men of god in the old testament you know david rising against goliath gideon taking 300 against you know thousands and thousands of other soldiers i mean god raises people up over and over again to fight political tyranny that was going on during their generations so right now as dark as it gets you know we see now men are waking up the you unique thing that when I was talking about the last episode about that July 18th when we went to uh, fight against the uh, let their voice to be heard yeah. uh, for the Planned Parenthood I was thinking because I've, I've been experiencing a lot we're going to different events I see a lot of women praise God for women that are on fire right yeah. but I haven't seen a lot of men and so like where are the men you know we, men's got to start stepping up praise God it was probably a good even split of men and women that were there over 300 of us all voicing our opinion you know so men are finally rearing up they're finally raising up you know and i get it we're out there and then you know if and, and women are out there too in the workforce but you know men are out there and the workforce we're working 10 12 hours a day plus the commute they're coming home and they're tired i get that i'm there too i just thankfully been created probably a little bit more energy than most people you know <laughs> but um you know it, 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 we got to get in the fight and we got to really uh be those protectors once again uh, for such a time as this is so important you know and getting back to the black road regiment you know those pastors that you know they would preach and close the bible and get their musket and say come on man let's go and they would lead their men in the battle to secure the freedoms and the liberty that we enjoy today and, and King George feared the Black Robe Regiment. And we got the pastors have got to rise up. And a lot of pastors are. There was churches that never closed down. A lot of independent fundamental Baptist churches, they stayed open. They understood their, their, their rights. But then a lot of other churches opened up, especially when Pastor Jack put out the word. Over 3,000 pastors throughout California opened up their doors on May 31st. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, and now they're like, we're never going to close down again. We made a big mistake. They understood it. So there's a, God has raised raising up his people, God is raising up his church, and God is raising up his men. But but they you know there is a, a clear line now to where you know the churches that are still asleep. Yeah. You know, but thank God there's a lot of us now that are waking up and joining in the fight and you're seeing it happen right now. Yeah. Uh and and the fight is not about killing your enemy. Mm -hmm. It's about killing the devil inside people's heart. So, and I, I think that's what everyone needs to do. And we, we need to keep ourselves and our family. And we need to pr be pr protector ourselves in order to protect others and in order to protect this idea. So I think the Black Robe Regiment, when I read about it, uh, it, it says that King George actually feared. Yes. The, the, because it, it not only go on the battle but it talks about the idea that uh, fights tyranny yes. and they actually uh turn their soldiers turn british soldiers against them become a spy or something it, it, it's a maybe it's a conspiracy maybe just hero folks tell or something but i, I could see that the mm -hmm. black robe regiment <clears throat> with the power of god uh they can't do something like that. Yeah, and yeah. I'll say this too about, uh, you know, going back to Second Amendment too, and, uh, you know, when we look about what's going around the world, especially during during the pandemic, um, what they did to Australia, what they did to New Zealand, what they did in Canada and some other nations, they would love to do that here, but you know why they didn't do that here? Because of our Second Amendment right. 
Mm-hmm. The Second Amendment is paramount because it, it protects that First Amendment and it protects the rest of it. Yeah. You know, so, you know, they understood that. That's why they said should not be infringed. That's yeah. a strong word. And and they chose that word very specifically, you know. So, uh, yes, I'm very much a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights because, well, look what's going on with our government. Yeah. They just invaded uh, a, a former president's Trump. home. We're now like a third world country trying to get rid of our political opposition yeah you know so this is a crazy very concerning time that we're living in yeah second amendment is actually like the one of the the most important one because Mm -hmm. without it they could just take all the amendment away you don't have any right yeah why you and what army They, they yeah so it's very scary yes yeah and uh talk about that uh law and order this is a very important topic for yes. the state. The state's uh, law and order is under constant attack. What do you think and uh, what are you going to do when you get up there? Man, it, I mean, I go on my city's page, La Mirada and Norwalk and surrounding cities, and I don't like what I see. I'm seeing videos uh, of just this crime going on. You know, the increase in crime, I, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this stuff and I'm thinking, man, this is like, like Gotham. You know? <laughs> We're waiting for a Batman to come, a vigilante to come and start rescuing us, right? I mean, it literally is like a, like Gotham. It's yeah. like just, it's so yeah. crazy when all these people just, you know, what do you call those, those, uh, uh, where they get a bunch of mob, mob flashes or whatever they call it, where they go in and they rob a uh, store and they run out, you know? And, and all the jokers are not, they're, they're all on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, you're, you're, you know, you're, it's funny you say that because my son, my my 31 year old, he uh, he does uh, uh, tenting windows, and then we're out in L.A. downtown L.A. and he was telling me, you know, the homeless people there, and he saw one homeless guy with a needle in his in his neck, you know, just walking out straight, and the syringe just sticking out of his neck, you know, uh, I can't remember what he told me, but it, it's just we're in a really bad situation, and you know, during the pandemic, they let out well, two. 3,000 prisoners. Yeah. This, this is what they do in communist countries because what they're going to prepare to try to switch things over. Yeah. Right. So they, they, they create fear. That, that's one thing that the enemy did. Uh, and, and it was very effective to, toward Christians as well is that the, the enemy created and the media, uh, taught people how to fear the terror and fear of death but the 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 cure to the terror and fear of death is the blood of jesus christ as christians you know we should not fear death you know because we if we die to be asked for the bodies be present with the lord you know the die is game but for me to live is christ so we have a job to do as long as we're here but uh proposition 47 we need to repeal that Mm-hmm. You know, uh, 57, 109, we need to repeal that. So these are things that we can do, uh, but we got to get enough of us up there. We got to get enough of the elected to make an impact because the assembly itself, I think it's like 56 Democrats to 19 Republicans. I think two or three independents and a couple undeclares. Yeah. So we got to get enough of us up there to make a difference, to start steering this ship uh, to st- and refund our police. We can never go back to defunding our police the way we did during the pandemic. We can't let uh, the the media dictate how we should be operating, yeah. you know, and to where they're, they're now, they, they defunded them. Uh, there's less cops. Um, cops re- retired earlier because just the support and all the, the red tape they got to go through. I have uh, dear friends that are in law enforcement. I have one dear friend who's a high school uh, classmate of mine. She works at the jails, a uh, women's jail here in Wilmington, and she was tell me of the programs that they had to cut inside jail and because they also reduce the sentencing if a person before all this happened the person that uh, was let's say you know for drugs they get drugs they, they get they book and then they would probably be in jail between nine months to a year but in that process the programs they had plus they were able to clean them up and get uh, to where they, they could get off of drugs so by the time they did their sentence and went through those programs to get rehabilitated it, they, they can go back to their family with a clear mind, uh, you know, cleaned up. 
But since they take that out and they don't have those programs no more, sometimes they just book them and then you release them. So they don't have time to clean up anymore. So that's why another reason why we have such a homeless pandemic too, because of the drugs yeah. and they're out there in the streets. So crime increases because of that. So we need to really refund our police and support them and, and give them the resources that they need. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. I've, I've learned so much from you. And then the, the well done thing, it really touched me during the interview. I was like bursting out. So yeah, so yeah, and uh, there's a lot we need to do uh, yes. for this country and for California. Everything starts in California. All the yes. bad things start in California, but all the good things start in California as yes. well. All these technology and and all these uh, advanced thing, all these Apple, uh, Google, everything <sighs> starts in California. So yes. if we can change California. People, a lot of people say we just we should just give up California. Mm -hmm. California is a uh, lost cause. If we give up, the enemy will be so much more powerful. Yes. So right now is for us, like Trump's speech, fight like hell. Yes. Fight like your life depends on it. it so this election season, go walk out for uh, Raul Ortiz, and then uh, go outside, tell your neighbors, and uh, tell tell them about his message share this video is there any last word you want to say to your uh voters yes you know uh just what ethan was saying that how important california is you know i grew up in california born bred and raised here uh, you know you can go to the mountains and enjoy some beautiful areas in the mountains a couple you know an hour or two later you can go to the beach you can go to the desert we we, we got it all here we're so fortunate so very blessed to be here in california you know and so it's worth fighting for you know california is the beachhead this is our normandy how california goes the rest of the nation goes and as the rest of the nation goes the rest of the world goes so we have got to stake our flag here draw the line in the sand and we got to stand up and we got to fight we got to and you know and i promise that i will you know fight against the high inflation and the high gas prices and lower the tax burden. I will fight to reinforce our law enforcement and supply what they need so we can have safer streets. And I will fight for our children's education and future and parental rights, restoring parental rights back to the parents. So, you know, come November 8th, please, please, please tell, commit to telling 10 people about our campaign, our You First campaign, uh, District 67, Raul Ortiz, uh, and, and uh, to get Together, we can make an impact, we can turn it around, and we can make California golden again. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. It's well, been thank awesome. You. Thank you. I, I'm having a blast. I wish you come out every week. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Thank you uh, guys for watching. Uh, my name is Ethan and Raul Ortiz. So thank you for coming. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank we'll you. See you in State Assembly. Yes. <laughs> That'll be the glory.